Okay, we are continuing with our subtopic types of layout. We have talked about the process layout, which is associated with one of the production systems. And we have learned about which of the production systems the process layout is associated with. Today we are continuing with, or at this time we are continuing with the types of layout. We are moving to the second one, which is product layout. And we have we said the uh, product layout is associated with the continuous production system. So if you understood the continuous production system, I gave you a, one video, or I showed you a video in that respect. So that was the continuous production system. And remember, it was in respect of manufacturing of Gary. So the, that layout, the arrangement, what, how is the arrangement made? According to, the arrangement is according to sequence of operation. So let's look at it. That is the underlying factor. That is the key. That is the foundation. So they will arrange the machines according to the various workstations. And the arrangement is done according to sequence of operation. According to sequence of operation. So that video I showed you, when they, the truck brought the cassava, it offloaded it somewhere. Then it moved to one workstation where a particular operation was executed. When it had been executed, it moved to another workstation. Then the work was done on it. Then from there, it moved to another workstation. So let's look at it. Assuming this is where they offloaded the uh, cassava. Then the next, if, if the next operation is supposed to be, let's say, washing of the uh, cassava, it will move in that line here. It will not go back here, and then when it has been done, then something will be done, then it come back. No. The arrangement will be according to sequence of operation. It will be according to, so in the machine, you, you see one machine, that specialized machine has different work of the extension that have been arranged according to sequence of operation. So if after, if this is what is supposed to be done, after that, the next thing, the next operation, then there will be workstation there, then it will move there. After that, it will not come back to another workstation here before it moves to no. They will arrange it. So if, if it is moving like that, it will move. Then if it is moving, it will have to move going here. Then it will be moving again. It will be, if it is supposed to be to move. Then if it will, it will move. It will not, for example, move. It will not come here. Then it moves backwards here. Then it will now come back here. Then it will move to this place. Then it will come back. No. The machine so is arranged. So when you put it there, it will flow from one workstation to another. From one workstation to another. Till the final product emerges. That is it. So this is so simple to understand. So I said, and we all know that it is associated with mass product. So I said, the product layout, which is also called line layout. And the name line layout tells you something. So it moves in line according to a certain sequence, sequence of operation. So it is called line layout. And it is typically found in mass or continuous production. 
You know said the components are arranged according to the production stages of the product. According to the production stages of the product. The components. What are the components we are looking at? The various workstations. They are arranged according to the production stages. So they put it there. If it's supposed to be washed, it will be washed. Then it moves to where it is supposed, the cassava is supposed to be peeled. From there, it will move to another workstation where it's supposed to be broken down into pieces. It will move to another point where it will grind into, let's say, powder form. It moves where water may be added, then becomes watery. It moves to a certain point where it is dried. It moves, so it will be moving in that order. So in other words, we are saying the machines, Men, materials are arranged according to sequence of operations. According to sequence of operations. So that is that. So it's very simple. Which industries can you find this? Which industries can you find this? Automated industry. Automated industry. I hope you know automated industry in car manufacturing. So that will be land production. The automated industry will be land production. If you like, you can go to YouTube and then you download a particular automated industry and then watch how the manufacturing of the car is done. You see that it will be moving from one workstation to another uninterruptedly. So, uh, the automated industry. Then, where they also make appliances. So, appliances, in appliances manufacturing. In Tesla manufacturing, to, uh, or in the Tesla industry, you will also see that one there. So, that is all that. Now let's look at the advantages of product layout. Very simple, straightforward advantage. Planning is very easy. Planning is very easy. Now remember, when we are talking about controlling, the controlling tools. If you remember, one of the tools was production planning and control. And in production planning and control, we look at five stages. The routine stage, Scheduling stage and so on and so forth. So you said routine. So this routine is part of the planning stage. So routine and scheduling. Routine is part of the planning stage. Scheduling, timing of your operation, timing of your operation. So routine and scheduling of operations are much easier and simple. Routine and scheduling of operations are much easier and uh, simple or simpler. Why? We are, we are comparing with the process layout. Here you see, after the initial planning, the rest will just fully. So we said uh, routine and scheduling of operations are much easier and simpler. Than in the process layout. Why? Because after the initial planning, which is the routine, everything follows. So the machine is set. Once you set the machine after the initial planning, everything will just follow. The timing. If a particular operation is supposed to take uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes at a particular workstation, it has automatically been set. It will not fail. It gets there, the operation is done. After, if it is 20 minutes, after 20 minutes, it will move automatically to another workstation. If at that workstation, the operation there is supposed to be 45 minutes, it, that is exactly what is going to happen. It is automated. So it will be moving from one work after the initial routine and scheduling. The rest will just follow. So it is much easier and simpler than the product layout. The product layout you may not even 
No, the process than the process layout. The process layout, you may even shelter, but you may not be able to meet your shelter. Because anything can happen to the men who are supposed to execute the uh, job. Anything can easily happen to the machine. So that is for uh, that one. The second advantage is that the production cost per unit is lower. Production cost per unit is lower. Why, why are, you, are you using lower? Lower because we are comparing this process, that layout to the uh, process layout. Why is it lower? You know, because the product layout is associated with mass production. It is associated with mass production. You know the advantages of producing in larger quantity. You know that some costs are fixed. It doesn't matter the quantity you are going to produce, whether one, two thousand or million. So you know that when we are talking about specialization, the same thing we did. Why the cost per unit is lower? Because you produce in larger quantity. So the product layout is associated with mass production. Once it is associated with mass production, then production cost per unit will be lower. So if you produce one million unit and you divide by the cost, you see that it will be lower than the product, the process layout, where you are not able to produce in volumes. So it is very simple and straightforward. The third advantage has got to do with span of control. We have done span of control. We say span of control is the number of subordinates that a superior can effectively supervise. We talked about two types. We look at wide or broad span of control and then narrow span of control. We said when you say span of control is wide or broad, it means that the superior can supervise more support or many subordinates. But where it is narrow, it means that the superior can supervise only few subordinates. Now when you are using the uh, product layout, you see that it's machine that pays. It is machine that is doing it. It is machine. So you need only few people. So one supervisor can supervise all of them. You may not, you don't need many supervisors. You, you can have just one supervisor because the uh, men may be working. You, you remember when, you, when I showed you that of the Gary manufacturing? You only saw the men at the final stage where they were uh, stealing the sack. You were using a handheld uh, sewing machine for the uh, ceiling. So that is for that one. So I said the uh, span of control is quite large. One supervisor can supervise many subordinates. So that is for that one. Now let's look at the disadvantages of the product layout. Very simple, straightforward disadvantages. The first one, very simple, straightforward, breakdown of machine or excessive absenteeism. Where, where there is breakdown of machine. Now remember the kind of machine you are using for the product layout. That is the specialized machine. So when it is break down, or when it breaks down, when the machine breaks down, or when it is broken down, what happens? We have already done it somewhere, that when the machine is broken down, 
when there is breakdown of machine, work cannot continue because it is using a specialized machine. So a breakdown of machine or excessive as absentee can cause shutdown of the entire plant. Everything has been built together into wet station. Take it this way, it is like the machines, if you are using the, if it were to be the intermittent, let's say you are using eight different types of machines, and they would have been detached. They would have been separated. So that you have eight separate machines. But in the product layout, where you are using the continuous production system, everything has been thrown together. But it is in workstation. So the product will move from one workstation to another. Or the material will move from one workstation to another. So the final product emerges or comes out. So when there is breakdown in respect of a particular workstation, so that workstation is, let's, let's look at it as an, if it were to be a separate machine. There is a problem there. So the entire plant, remember when you say plant, we are not talking about trees. We are talking about the machine. That specialized machine, that big machine, would have to be shut down. But if it were the process layout, where the machines are separated, if one machine is spoiled, the others will be working. So that is for that one. Another disadvantage is that it will be very difficult to isolate. You see, it may happen that a particular part of the machine may be making so much noise. A particular part of the machine may be vibrating excessively. A particular part of the machine or workstation may be producing so much heat. Remember when we talk about workplace hazards? Remember when we were talking about human resource management? We said excessive machines that make excessive noise to be separated from the rest. Now, in product layout, if a particular workstation, a machine that is used for a particular operation, makes excessive noise, how are you going to separate it from the rest? If a particular machine is making excessive noise, how are you going to separate it from the rest? So that would be very difficult. So I said it is difficult to isolate machines which create excessive noise, dust, heat, vibration, etc. So it will still be there in that same room and making that excessive noise. It will be that heat, that excessive heat will be produced. You cannot separate it from the rest. Remember, a particular workstation is not making that noise. It's not producing that heat or that dust. But they are together, and they can, you cannot detect them. So that is the uh, point. The third one has already been done very simple, straightforward. High volumes must be maintained. If you are using the product layout, then high volumes must be maintained. High volumes must be maintained. So that is for that one. Otherwise, it will be costly. Because it is associated with mass production. So that is for that one. The last one, very simple, straightforward, is that it will be very difficult for you to establish individual base incentive plan. Very difficult to establish individual based incentive plan now remember it is machine based it is not human or man paced it is not like i have been giving work 
and then uh, the time that I'm supposed to finish with that work depends on me. It is not that the time depends on you. Everything is set in the machine. And it has been done in such a way that it's the machine that has that determines when a particular operation starts, when it ends, the moment it ends, it moves to another stage. So how are you going to determine individual incentive plan so that you know that this person is more efficient than this person and therefore this is the bonus we are supposed to give to this person in respect this is the one that is supposed to be given this but not that it is going to be very difficult to establish that simply because the work is machine paced P A C E D. It is machine paced, not men paced. So if you find it difficult to establish individual incentive plan, so that is for that one. Now let me pause and check whether time left will allow you to add that of the first position layout. Otherwise, that one is very simple, straightforward, very short. Uh, but it depends on the time left. So let me check, let me pause and check the time left. Okay, I can continue uh, with the face position layout. That's very simple, straightforward. So uh, five minutes, I should be through with that one. Fixed position layout, very simple. Now let me start with the example. Now, remember, layout is talking about arrangement of men, machine, materials, and uh, other facilities. Is that not it? Good. Now, when you are building a bridge, what happens? Do you build a bridge somewhere and then you carry it? Then you go and then fix it or place it at where it is supposed to be. So, for example, if you are building a particular bridge, an overhead, then it will be done here. Then, uh, we will carry it to where it's supposed to be. Is that what is done? Certainly no. How about road construction? Do you construct the road somewhere and then you carry it? So assuming the road, you are constructing road in Kumase, then you build it where here, and then you carry the road to that place. No, that is not what happened. What about if you are building a house? How about a dam? You see, so here, what happens? It is rather the men, it is rather the materials, it's rather the machine that move to the site, the first look, that first location. So that is what we call first uh, position layout. So when you say first position layout, and why are you doing that? Because of the nature of the product. It's bulky. It is heavier. So you cannot construct it and then carry it to the uh, place. Ship. If the, you, you don't build it somewhere and then you carry it to the sea, no. It has to be built there, right there. So that is for that one. And it is because of the nature of the product. What is the nature? It is uh, heavier. It is bulkier. So we said the product remains at one location. The product remains at one location. That is the first location. First location. While the men, machines, materials, and other facilities are brought to the site. They are brought to the site. So the men will go to the site. The materials will go to the site. The cement, if it is road construction, you carry the materials, the men, and other facilities to the site. Then you construct it. If it is bridge, the same thing. If it is a dam, the same thing. If it is a ship, the same thing. So that is for the first position layout. And I have told you 
that it is because of the nature of the material. It is heavy. It is bulky. So that is that. The product doesn't move to the men. It's the men and then the material that move to the site. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of tags of layout. Process layout, product layout, and first position layout. In this case, we looked at the arrangement. Please, even if you wouldn't know anything, their mean is what they are, you must know. You must know. So that if you are asked to explain the types of layout, process layout, you should be able to explain that the arrangement. So in this case, you say the arrangement of so and the arrangement of that so and it's the arrangement of the machines, the arrangement of the men, the arrangement of materials, the arrangement of other facilities. So if it's the process layout, the arrangement is that according to function or the operations they perform. The machines are arranged according to the function or the operation they perform. If it is the product layout, the arrangement of all those things is according to sequence of operation. Then if it is the fixed position, the men, the materials, and other facilities will rather move to the site instead of the product moving. The men and whatever will move to the site side because of how heavy they are. Then we talked about the advantages and then the disadvantages of the process and then the product layout. And I'm saying even if you cannot remember anything, if you cannot get it, concentrate so much, know what they are. They, for essence purposes, especially for what say, the advantages and then the disadvantages may not be necessary, but it's very important for you to uh, know we have learned it. Learning is not about exams alone. But please know this the, the meaning, understand them. And I think uh, I've done my best to explain them to your understanding. To meet again another time and continue with our topic on production management. The next time we meet, we'll be looking at production planning and control. Production planning and control. Now remember, this one, we did that. And that when we are talking about the principles of management, the functions of management, and we came to control it. We talked about control tools. And one of the tools we learned was the production planning and control. Then we look at the steps involved. Routine, which is the planning stage, then the settling. We said that the time will not allow me to go through so the routine stage, the settling stage, dispatching, uh, inspection, follow up, we talked about that. We'll be looking at that into details when we meet next time. Till we meet another again and continue with our topic production management. It is bye bye.